in a new series of Someone and the Grumbleweeds. This week's Someone is Ken Platt. Order! Order! Mr. Speaker, as the opposition spokesman for the environmental protection, countryside conservation and pollution control, I would like to ask my right honourable friend, the Minister for Environmental Protection, Countryside Conservation and Pollution Control, if he would order his head of Department of Environmental Protection, Countryside Conservation and Pollution Control to order a review of the programme for rationalisation of effluent disposal with a view to ensuring immediate, efficient and cost-effective waste management nationwide. Certainly. <laughs> Harry, Bill says tell Fred to stop prattling about with a drain. <laughs> And I'm Morris, and I'm tall. I'm grey, I'm, I'm ugly, I'm short, and I'm fat, and I'm bald as a billiard ball. <laughs> and we interrupt this programme with news of a major ecological breakthrough. David Bellamy has successfully crossed a horse chestnut with a rubber plants. He's now got conkers that bounce. <laughs> There's the three of us, waiting to get the right. Going on stage, hoping the studio's right. The three of us acting our age. Sir Graham, he's aging our acts. That's nice. Excuse me, pal. Oh, yes, can I help you? Do you go past uh, Salford Cemetery? Ah, uh, no. Oh. Well, uh, can you take me as far as uh, Stanley Street Crossroads? <laughs> Stanley Street Crossroads? Ah, uh, no, no. Oh. Well, is it possible to drop me off outside the municipal baths? Oh, no. <laughs> the municipal baths. <laughs> no. Oh. Well, how about just taking me as far as the stonemason's arms? I'm going to have to disappoint you again there. Sorry. All right, then as far as the bus station, I'll catch your bus. I'm terribly sorry, but, well, could I give you a bit of advice? Certainly. Why don't you ask that taxi driver across the road? This is a hot dog stall. <laughs> my hair's red as copper. My hair's green as sink. My hair has all fallen out ages ago, but my head's a lovely pink. Where the is. <laughs> and we interrupt this programme yet again to bring you news of the United States Tennis Championships. So it's over to Harry Carpenter at Flushing Meadow. <laughs> Three of us doing the job, taking the knocks on the gym. Yes, the three of us, Graymo and Rob, Graham, Maurice, and Robin. Good morning, sir. Can I help you? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> I want to buy a little winter coat for my little doggy. Uh, certainly, sir. What size? Oh, I don't know its size, no. Oh, well, uh, can you bring the dog in to be measured? Oh, no, no. I can't do that, no. Uh, uh, why not? I want it to be a surprise. <laughs> Good things coming three. I've learned that as a lad. I'm Robin. I'm Morris. He's Graham. Well, two out of three's not bad. Trio, everyone needs half an hour with someone and the grumble. Horror lovers everywhere. <laughs> Welcome to the horror movie. My name is Esther Ranson. <laughs> I'd like to take you now into the world of the unknown. You're in it, pal. The world of the supernatural. Oh, flipping neck. <laughs> Deep down into the dungeons of the mind. Oh, a okay, thump. <laughs> Beyond the barriers of human endurance. I want my mum. <laughs> Into the world of fear and torment. I think I've wet myself. 
Tonight you will be horrified, mortified, and panic-stricken. They're not bringing back crossroads, though. <laughs> From the people who brought you Nightmare on Elm Street comes something more frightening, more hideous, more petrifying. The door opens. The thing lurches into the room. It stands there, horrible, vile, and ugly. The thing speaks. I won't take my coat off, I'm not stopping. <laughs> oh, what a privilege. What a fantastic privilege to meet the one and only, uh, oh dear, do you know, I know your name as well as my own. Well, I don't. <laughs> I've seen him before, old gaffer, but I just can't put a name to the face. Go on, give us a clue. What sort of a clue would you like me to give you? Could you tell us what they called you? <laughs> yeah, big Wally Rubbish. Wally Rubbish? He, you must be a relation of mine. Luke, I'm daft as a brush. That makes two of you. <laughs> Here comes Ernest and Geoffrey, all lad. They'll know his name. Oh, Ernest, look who it is. Where? There, it's Cuddly Ken. Oh, it is! Who is it? Who is it? Cuddly Ken. in the flesh. In the flesh. Oh, the one and only. <laughs> the one and only Ken Platt. <laughs> yes. Never heard of him. <laughs> you must have done. I've been going for years. Of course you have been. I remember you now. <laughs> Central Pier Blackpool, one of the best contortionists I've ever seen. Don't be daft. I've never contorted in my life. You must have, Len. <laughs> you used to put your right leg under your left armpit, your left leg round your neck, and then yodel the national anthem. Len Pratt. <laughs> it's Ken Platt. I make everybody laugh. Then why don't it work with me, pal? <laughs> Luke, I haven't come here to be insulted. Ignore him, Ken. Me and Geoffrey have seen you loads of times. We have loads of times. No, he's hilarious. Yes, he, he is. is. He is. What is he? He's hilarious. Hilarious. Yes. 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 Hilarious. Hilarious. Thank goodness somebody knows who I am. I'm not joking. You come on a radio show, get insulted right, left and centre, accused of being a contortionist called Len Pratt. It's not right. Hey, just a minute, pal. Don't take that attitude with me. Otherwise, you might just end up with your right leg under your left armpit and your left leg round your flipping neck. Oh, here's Fred Fibber. He knows everything, you know. Ah, oh, right, lads. I hope look who's here. Brilliant, my favourite. Good to see you, Kenny, old pal. You mean you know this, Wally? Well, everybody knows Kenny. Brilliant he is. Been going years, seen him thousands of times. He has audiences in hysterics, man. Do you know you've made me the happiest man in the world? My pleasure, Kenny old pal. Half the people here didn't know who I was. Ridiculous. Kenny Pratt, the best contortionist I've ever seen. <laughs> and welcome to Lancaster Gate, the headquarters of the Football League. Association. Pardon? Association. <laughs> oh, sorry. Headquarters of the Football Association, where the draw for the fourth round... Third. What? Third. Oh. <laughs> the third round of the FA Cup is about to take place. This is always a very interesting stage in the competition because this is where the really big glamour clubs can come up against surprise opponents. The numbers will be drawn by Mr. George... Charlie. Pardon? Uh, Charlie. Charlie. Oh, Mr. Charlie Turner. Bellamy. Uh, Mr. Charlie Bellamy, and the teams will be called by the FA Secretary... Chairman. Ch Chairman. Why don't you stop interfering me, you odious little man? Why don't you just go away? It's my ball. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Yes, quite right. Of course, yes. Hmm. The atmosphere here is very tense. You could almost hear a pin drop. Sorry, I just dropped a pin. <laughs> Any more from you, you hollow little man, you'll be thrown out of here. It's my ball. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Yes, <laughs> would, you, uh, would you like a cushion? <laughs> the draw is now about to take place. Number 34. 
Nottingham Forest. Number 29. We'll play the Sid Lawrence Orchestra. <laughs> this is a fascinating draw because the Sid Lawrence Orchestra have been playing very, very well lately. <laughs> when I spoke to Sid earlier, he said whoever they got, the lads would win. Two, one, two, one. We'll 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 win. And now it's time to get your pencil and paper out as we present Grundleweed Recipe Time with the famous German chef, Herr Lacker. <laughs> Thank you and hello, mein Herren und mein Kippers. <laughs> Today we are going to make the flatten and rounden pancake. <laughs> so, first we make the butter. So we need the big bucket. And mixing up in the butter. Yeah. Splodging, 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 mixed on butter. Oh dear, the wrong bucket. We have put in the butter into the bucket with the wallpaper paste. So we dip it in the finger and. Mm, it's tasting good one. <laughs> I shall use it to wallpaper the back and better woman. So. We will now make the cherry cake. So we first add in another bucket. <laughs> and bung in the flour. Bung in, bung in. <laughs> And then bung in the butter. Boom. And the eggs in. Three, two, Three eggs. <laughs> And the bacon. <laughs> and the rubber gloves. Oh, hey. oh, sorry. Uh, oh dear, never mind. <laughs> We're mixing in the rubber gloves. Mix and noise. <laughs> no, we need the cherries. Cherries? Where are you? Come along, cherries. Come to Otto. <laughs> Where's the cherries? Ah, they're the hands of cleaning board. Come here. So, we pick them up. Oh dear, they are floating and they're fussing up. <laughs> Never mind, pick an out and stick it in a cake and bring the oven on. Strike the match and voila! <laughs> <coughs> oh dear, it's happened again. <laughs> Never mind, then, saves us having to eat the filthy stuff and decorate the ceiling. <laughs> And welcome once again to a special edition of Music for the Masses from me, Ernest. And me, Geoffrey. And before we go any further, Geoffrey, can I thank you for my lovely, lovely birthday present? Did you like it, Ernie? Like it, like it, like it. I love it. Mm. I've always wanted a little pussy. Well... <laughs> well, you've got one now, haven't you, Ernest? Mm. I take it everywhere with me, Geoffrey. Oh. Down to the laundrette, to mm. my needlework classes, mm. to the old food shop. Oh, lovely. Do you carry him in your arms, Ernie? Well, Geoffrey, I always end up carrying him because he just doesn't seem to like going on his lead. I have to drag him. Ernest? You'd think a little pussycat would enjoy a walk, but no, he just sits there and I have to drag him. Ernest, it's to put your pyjamas in. <laughs> what is? It's stuffed, Ernest. You put your pyjamas in it and you sit it on your bed. <laughs> I could tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Smack me old legs at playtime. <laughs> I've been dragging it round Tesco's all morning. <laughs> oh, you silly pink rocker. <laughs> Isn't it? Didn't you know? No, oh, Jeffrey, it's so lifelike. But you must have seen the zip under its tummy. Yes, I know, but I... Well, I thought it had had an operation. <laughs> Ernest, they don't put zippers on after operation. Oh, yes, they did on my Uncle Percy. Oh, whereabouts, Ernest? Cottage Hospital. 
fancy. Anyway, I can't wait to see my Uncle Percy again and tell him. Tell him what, Ernest? Tell him he's got the most unusual place in the world to keep his pyjamas! Ah! <laughs> anyway, this isn't getting on with the programme, is it? Do you know, Geoffrey, I'd completely forgotten about the programme and what a surprise we have this week. What a surprise indeed, Ernest. Yes. The world premiere. The world premiere. Of a song on radio sung by the one and only Fred Fibb. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Fred Fibber. Oh, it's clever. It's fabulous. It's fabulous. Thank what a singer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are you all listening? Right. Listen to this. <laughs> now, my name is Fred Fibber. Everybody's heard of me. There is never a day goes by when I'm not on TV. I'm always on the front page of your paper, as you know. And I've got my own Fibber channel on the radio. Fred Fibber, statesman, sportsman, scientist, star and saint. You've heard of all these lads before, but here is one you ain't. Ha <laughs> I'm Frederick the First, I am. Frederick the First, I am, I am. Queen Elizabeth the Second's a fake. That Archbishop crowned her by mistake. I'm the rightful King Frederick. They snatched me from the old Queen Mother's pram. <laughs> Though I'm known as Fame by Frederick. Frederick the first I am. <laughs> Do you get me? It's all true, this, you know, about so kosher. Now I were Prime Minister's right hand man and a temporary Pope. I played Arsenal on my own, here they didn't have an hope. It's me who split the atom, right? And when I split them, this day split. I saved the world from Martians, well, I like to do me bit. Elvis were really me, and I'm, I'm one of the Fab Four. <laughs> and who wrote them Lloyd Webber shows? I did. And furthermore, I'm Frederick the First, I am. Frederick the First, I am, I am. I would put me crown on just for an hour, but they keep it in the bloody tower. Yes, the king's really Frederick. <laughs> the palace will be known as Fibbingham, do you mind? So three cheers for good King Frederick, yeah. Frederick the first, I am past me, me scepter. Frederick the first, I am. Look, I hope you don't mind me saying this, but uh, when am I going to do something? <laughs> Have you ever tried dramatic acting? Dramatic acting? Oh, you name it, I'll do it. Good, cos we're gonna do a big dramatic piece called The Untouchables. <laughs> During the days of prohibition in America, the FBI decided to form an elite body of men dedicated to one cause, the capture and eventual conviction of the most dangerous mobs to the criminal world has ever known, Al Capone. These highly trained enforcement officers became the scourge of every hoodlum in town. These men were led by the most respected, the most fearless man the FBI could find. His name, Elliot Mess. <laughs> Mess had put more killers behind bars than David Attenborough. And he was about to strike against the biggest gang leader of them all. The place, Chicago. The date, October the 47th. The time, the big fingers on the three and the little fingers on the five. Uh, 20 past 11. The members of the Untouchables were waiting for Elliot. They are staked out on the 21st floor of a block of cellars. <laughs> It's a tense moment for all of them as they wait to meet the fearless Elliot Mess for the first time. The pitiless, the unmerciful Elliot Mess. I'll not take my bulletproof vest off. I'm not stopping. <laughs> oh, that voice. I'm shaking like a blamange on a skateboard. <laughs> Just a minute. Him, rough, tough and pitiless. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. <laughs> I saw him in The Sound of Music. <laughs> he was a nun. 
<laughs> Actually, I don't, you'll be fooled by appearances. Have you noticed that bulge underneath his coat? <laughs> He's got a gun. No, I bought some fish and chips on my way over. <laughs> I'm keeping them warm. <laughs> Mr. Mess, have you got an assignment? Uh, no, it's these trousers. They've just come back from the cleaners. <laughs> Let me get this straight. He's supposed to be the head of the untouchables. All right, show us your badge. Certainly. There you are. That's a blue Peter badge. <laughs> I know. I sent in over 3,000 milk bottle tops. <laughs> what from? It was the only way I could get rid of them. Um, what happened to the 3,000 bottles of milk? I drank them all. You drank 3,000 pints of milk, what for? Ian Rush said that if I didn't, I'd finish up playing for Accrington Stanley. <laughs> we now know that Elliot Ness will not be playing for Accrington Stanley. This is bad news for the underworld, because it means Why don't that... you just give it a rest, Tom? OK, I'll go and get something to eat. I've got some fish and chips here. <laughs> hey, tell us how you caught Babyface Nelson, Mr Mess. Well, I knew where he was, so I put a tail on him. Did it work? No, but it kept the flies off the boiled ham. <laughs> I should have gone to basket weaving. I spotted Babyface Nelson and I pulled the brim of my hat down over my eyes. What happened? I walked into a lamppost. <laughs> How did you capture Babyface Nelson, Mr. Meister? Well, I followed him into the park, he sat down on a bench and fell asleep. And then you pulled out your gun and you said, You dirty rat! You dirty rotten rat! I've met some dirty rats in my time. But you're the dirtiest rat I've ever met, you dirty rat. You mucky dirty rat. You filthy dirty rat. And then you filled him full of lead. No, I tied his shoelaces together. If you're so clever, how are we going to catch Al Capone? Easy. Surround him. Well, all of us? No, just you. How can I surround him on my own? With your mouth. It's big enough. <laughs> Open it, rubbish. You've been asking for that one, Uncle Nasty. Ah, but how are we going to capture Al Capone, Mr. Mess? Well, now, I've got a plan. I happen to know where and when Al Capone is going to do his next job. Once again, Ness is one step ahead of the notorious Al Capone. Little does Capone know... One more peep out of you, pal, and I'll swap your ears over and you'll leave here with a vest full of broken ribs. Thank you. Now, <laughs> as you don't know me very well, there's something you should know about for when we have other secret meetings. What's that? Me secret knock. Secret knock? So that when I arrive, you'll know it's me and not some gangster pretending to be me. What a brilliant idea. I'll go outside and do my secret knock. Why don't you just go outside, go home and give us all a bit of peace? I can't do that. Why not? Because... We are the untouchables, we are very brave. We'll fight a body rough and shifty, especially if she's over 50. <laughs> Full of courage, bold and plucky, no one do we fear. We will catch the naughty men and be back home for news at ten. Can't we all watch Bill and Ben? No. Cos we're untouchables. So now Elliot Mess has established that the members of his gang... Oh, I can't take any more of this, pal. This is it. Mist. <laughs> you were going to do your secret knock, Mr Mess. Yes, I'll go outside and do it now. Right. I'm going to do my secret knock now. I hadn't finished. <laughs> Sorry. I'll go outside and do it again. <laughs> I've finished now. Can I come in? Mr. Mess, 
You said that you know where and when Al Capone's going to do his next job. Yes, you did, didn't you? You did, you did, you yes, did. told yes. us, yes, you did. You told us? Well, it's the most daring, the most cheeky job he's ever done. Ooh, what's he going to do? Ooh, yes, what is, is he, he going, going to, to do? do? Rob the police. Rob the police. Rob the police. Did you hear what he said? Rob the police. He wants. He won't. No, he'll never get away with it. No, he no. won't ever get away with robbing the police. The no. Police. The police. Who won't he ever get away with robbing? The police. The police. The police. The police. The police. The police. never get away with it. Oh, yes. We're too clever. Yeah, we, we are. are. Mm -hmm. Now I want you all to look at this photo of Al Capone so that you'll know him when you meet him. Have a look. Oh, oh. What a wicked face. Oh, it's evil, that face, it isn't it? It's is. evil. Cruel. Cruel as well, cruel. yes, cruel. cruel. And horrible. And horrible. 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 Hey, up. It's you. I know. Stick them up. <laughs> Let's have your wallets and your loose change. I just can't be trusted. Oh, we've been done. Oh, oh it's <laughs> We'll see you next time. Yes, we'll see you again. So, tickety tonk. Bye for now. Tutty bye and TTFN. Of the three of us. Just the three of us. There's me. And me. And him. And me. I never get a chance to say it. <laughs> <laughs> You have been listening to Someone and the Grumbleweeds. Graham, Morris and Robin were the Grumbleweeds and me, daft as a brush, Ken Flatt, was someone. Music was provided by Dave Collett, Perry Duke and Andy Marples with lyrics by Jeremy Brown. The script was by Eddie Braben, Ron McDonnell, John Brown, Richard Jones and the producer, Mike Craig, who didn't take his coat off because we sent him home hours ago. Ta-ra! You can get a repeat of that program on Saturday at 1 p.m.